Greetings. The Church of God has been a controversial issue in the last few weeks and months, and I want to touch on it today biblically. And I'm not going to address all that they are apparently standing for, freedom, rights, uh, charters, all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to touch on that. There's a few things there that maybe I would even agree with them on. Definitely some things in their approach that I would disagree on. But I want to get more at the idea of who they claim to be. They claim, and they write it on their sign, that we are the Church of God. Now, I want to tell you that we are the Church of God. And I think they would probably disagree with that. But my main focus won't be to just attack them necessarily, but hopefully to clarify in the scriptures what it means to be the church of God and who is the church of God. Now, obviously, again, as I've mentioned before on these videos, these are very short form videos. I can't give you deep, deep, in-depth study, but I can look at a few verses with you that I think should make this pretty exposed, pretty clear right away. There is only one church. It's a universal church. It's a global, worldwide church. It's God's church. In Acts um, chapter 2, verse 4, early on in the church, when the church just had begun after the day of Pentecost and thousands are being added to it, it says that they were praising God, chapter 2, verse 47, and having favor with all people. People were really enjoying the church. And the Lord, God, added to the church daily such as should be saved. So it's not a group, a one group that meets somewhere at a specific location that can say, okay, we're going to make you a part of our church, and then you will be the church of God. God adds to the church, and I would say it is completely synonymous with salvation. The moment you trust Jesus, and this goes along with my last video that I shared, the moment you trust Jesus you are automatically made a part of the church. It's a spiritual process that God does. The moment you believe the gospel, I've mentioned this before too, you are baptized into the body of Christ so that you now become flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone, as the Bible says. You are one with him. He is the head and he gives nourishment to all the rest of the body. The body is the church. In, first, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 16, it says, For by him, Jesus, were all things created. Now, this is going back to the beginning. Everything was made by Jesus that are in heaven, that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things. He's more important than all things. He is the preeminent one. By him, all things consist. Everything in the world consists by Jesus. And here's the, the verse I want to get to. He is the head of the body. The head of the body, the church. He defines it very plainly, very clearly. The moment you believe the gospel, you are baptized into the body. If you are the body, you are the church. Who, Jesus, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. So, there are also statements about churches. So, which is it? Are there churches or is there one church? Well, the way I see it, the way I envision it, it is this. Globally, there is one body. It is all believing members that are alive today and that have gone on before and that are yet to be born again into the body. One day the bride of Christ will be made complete, the church will be full, and, and whatever happens there, it will be glorious and beautiful, and there will be a great celebration. But as of now, every believing person, everyone who accepts the Lord Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, they are added to this one global worldwide body. And then, it meets and gathers in specific places. This might be in your living rooms. This might be in homes. This might be in buildings that are made for that particular thing. Now, many of us often call the building that we gather at, we call that the church. That is an error. That's the wrong way of viewing it. And I've become so anal about that that I correct my children every single time they talk about going to the church because it's natural. And I, I'm not going to nitpick and criticize everyone who says we're going to the church because I understand you're talking about going to the place where the church gathers. But the building is not the church. That should be made very clear. But there's other places where it says, say in, in Corinth, it says to the church at Corinth. In the book of Revelation, it talks about the church at Laodicea, the church at Philadelphia, the church at Pergamos, so on and so forth. So we as a group 
that gathers at Springfield, we decided to simply leave our name very simple and call ourselves the Church at Springfield for a very specific reason. Now, there's some people that get really creative and call their church Redemption or uh, this, that, and the other thing. They might come up with pretty creative titles. To me, those are more ministry titles rather than church titles. Because if you are Bible-believing Christians who trust the Lord Jesus for your salvation and you gather together, that's, that's key. You gather together, you are the church. The church is the believing people who come together. It is another word for community. It is another word for um, congregation. The people who come together under the the auspices of Jesus, under the authority of the Lord Jesus, you gather together in his name, that is the church. It is not one specific group that all dresses the same way, that all submits to one uh, physical person on this earth. It is all the believers in the whole world, red, brown, yellow, black, and white, everywhere across the globe, those that are believing and trusting in the Lord Jesus for salvation, they are the church. So we at Springfield... We are the church of God. We are the church of God that gathers at Springfield. Paul says in, in Acts chapter 20, Take heed, he's speaking to the elders of the church, Take heed unto yourselves, meaning be very watchful, be very careful over your own life, and also to all the flock. The flock is the church. It is the people of God. It is the sheep that God has gathered to himself. Take heed to yourself and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers, to feed the church of God. The people of God are the church of God. And I know most of you probably understand this already. And yet when we run into some of these people who believe that they are the one true church, it's so twisted and it's so um, silly, if I can put it so plainly. It, it's, it's laughable when you look at the scriptures to think that this one group says that they are the only church of God. God has people in all kinds of groups, and many of us have false doctrine. Many of us believe error in so many different ways, and there are probably places where it would be less appropriate for you to gather with certain people. And if they have left off certain of the basic principles of the gospel and of the doctrine of who God is and who Jesus is, then yes, maybe you should leave that group alone. And there I would say, if you participate in quote unquote the church of God that calls themselves that the one that we're obviously all thinking about I would recommend you leave they hold not to the Lord Jesus as their head although if you ask them of course they would say they do they hold to their earthly apostles as their head they call them the uh, the mighty one even they call him the name above all names on earth the the governor of the whole world and, and it's Absolutely ridiculous. Most people don't realize what they all teach, but there's a great video out there that I posted the other day that if you want, you can go back and watch. We don't believe that. The church of God, the true church of God does not believe that. God looks down on the earth. He sees his church globally. And then there are specific location churches. So we are the church at Springfield. You guys might be the church at Leamington. You might be the church at Elmer. You might be the church at Summer's Corners, you know, and you might have a different name on your front sign. Fine. But God sees you as the church that gathers at. The church that gathers at. Each one of these local assemblies, that's another word of saying the word church, each one of these local assemblies is the church of God functioning as their own, own little body, but realizing that it's only a small segment of the true body. We are the church of God. We shouldn't refrain from using that term. We shouldn't hold back just because there's a uh, heretical group out there that calls themselves the Church of God. We are the Church of God. God is feeding us through the elders of the Church. He is l feeding us through His own Word. We are the Church of God at this place, at that place, and we hold to the head, the only true head, the Lord Jesus Christ. So, hopefully that's clear to everyone that... The church is not one specific group. The church is the body of Christ globally, and the church gathers individually at different locations, and it is all the church. There's churches, but really it's only one true church.